Future. So I thought I'd exhausted this topic, but there's so much more to talk about with the 100% autonomous cars and my two, three year predictions still on track with some big news announced just today. So the CEO of Ford Motor Company, you know, literally the company that Henry Ford started that brought mass market cars to everyone, just announced that they're going to aim for 100% autonomous cars by 2021. So literally within five years, the fifth largest car manufacturer in the world is going to be producing, mass producing 100% autonomous cars that don't even have a steering wheel. What the fuck, man? This shit's actually happening. Like, fully autonomous robotic cars driving everywhere. That changes society massively. I put out a few short videos before basically aligning my predictions with what Elon Musk has said about their technology being basically ready for public use within about two years. The only issue after that is regulations and production. And what I said before is that, like, the instant they set these fully autonomous cars start rolling off manufacturing lines, groups like Uber have an economic incentive to buy or lease or get exclusive contracts on every single car. Because theoretically, these cars can just roll off 100% robotic manufacturing lines really fast, which is something Tesla and Elon Musk is working on, and then they can drive themselves out to a location where they just start working for Uber. Because if you can remove the driver from the equation, then you suddenly reduce the cost by at least a tenth, um, which means that Uber can start offering rides to you that are cheaper than owning your own car by a long shot. And if we just look at Uber alone, like not only is there an economic incentive for them to own or lease or exclusively control as many cars as possible, there's also the competitive advantage because everyone else is planning to do the same thing. Like Tesla in their master plan version 2, they've already announced that they plan to offer an autonomous fleet on-demand service, but I think that's mostly so that they can reduce the cost of the cars they sell, because then you can basically make money back. But I think the, the ultimate winner of this entire thing will be the group that controls the largest fleet of self-driving autonomous cars, and I think that's still going to end up being Uber. So Uber can either like lease or buy or have exclusive contracts with every single manufacturer of every self-driving car. They will pay a premium for as many cars as they can get their hands on. As a downside to this, um, I love the idea of decentralization, of cars literally owning themselves. Um, and there's a group called Arcade City which is doing a great job of a decentralized Uber. But if Uber actually controls all the cars either via leasing or they own them, then it's very hard to decentralize that company because they essentially own all those assets. Which is kind of like a reversal on their model so far. <laughs> And this is why I predicted within about two to three years, like autonomous self-driving cars will be completely abundant. Like pretty much in every city, you'll be able to get around anywhere through an autonomous Uber. You won't need to own a car anymore. Now, the only bottleneck to this prediction is the speed at which you can produce self-driving electric cars. Because sure, you can retrofit and upgrade combustion engine cars, but it's much easier and much more beneficial to have all electric cars. Okay, so not too long ago, I actually ran the numbers. So there are 1.2 billion uh, combustion engine cars on the planet and only 1 million electric cars. So how do we replace them as quick as possible? Well, you can go look up this stat. So 95% of the time, cars basically sit there idle. They're like a giant chunk of wasted metal just sitting there waiting 95% of the time. <laughs> well, obviously, like 100% autonomous electric cars would be constantly in use. They'd be working for Uber or Lyft or one of those services, constantly driving people around at all times. So if you calculate that from, say, pure 100% efficiency, it means that we only need 60 million self-driving electric cars to replace the 1.2 billion cars that we currently have on the planet. In addition to that, at the moment, we currently produce 60 million new cars per year. But again, you, you run the same maths on that. What's 5% of 60 million? 3 million. So you need 3 million new cars each year. So 60 million cars and then 3 million per year. That sounds like a lot, but that's like very, very tiny amount to basically have all electric, clean, 100% autonomous transport for everyone. So the Tesla Gigafactory 1 actually plans to be producing 1.5 million all-electric autonomous cars by 2020. So that's already half of your annual production requirement to get to this goal. But like I said, Ford Motor Company just announced today that they plan to mass-produce self-driving fully autonomous cars by 2021, and they're the fifth largest car manufacturer by volume in the world. Now, those top five companies, which is uh, Toyota, GM, Volkswagen, Hyundai, and Ford, between them, they produce a combination of 40 million, roughly 40 million cars per year. Now, have a think about the very simple business game theory at play and the economic incentives at play when suddenly you can actually access self-driving cars on demand for a tenth the cost of owning a car. Very suddenly within the next five years, demand for combustion engine cars will completely plummet. Why own a car when you can get around to the tenth of the price? And so what do you do with all these production lines you had for making new cars? And so you would think that from a company perspective, the incentive here would be for all the large car manufacturers to instantly switch over to producing all 100% autonomous electric cars that they can lease or sell at wholesale. And the moment that happens, you basically only need two years to get to that 60 million car level. Um, <laughs> so it's, like, it's just going to happen. So I thought, what all these cars actually need to do, regardless of the manufacturer or the service or whatever, is they all need to share their data, their machine learning data, to improve themselves. 
This is how Tesla's actually teaching their cars to become self-driving, is they actually learn from each other. So every single turn they take, they actually record that data and share it with all the other cars in the fleet. And so we don't want like, you know, the, the Tesla machine learning algorithm for self-driving and the Ford machine learning algorithm and the Uber one and none of them talk to each other. For safety purposes, they need to all talk to each other. So I do hope that all these car manufacturers and services actually all form some type of partnership where they actually share all their data because you really want every single self-driving car on the planet to be learning from each other and improving. It'll be interesting if we see a buyback program from governments and different companies to actually get all of the old non-self-driving cars, the dangerous ones, off the road. <laughs> So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty keen about just walking across the street without looking, without needing to use street lights, and actually reclaiming all the car parks and multi-lane highways to make them all parks. It'd be so cool. Snap your thoughts at Future.